But Kari, I'm gonna start with you. You've heard the reporting, you've seen it. Sources saying that President Biden is seething tonight at former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, uh, tying her to the latest round of Democratic defections, calling for him to suspend his campaign. Um, when you hear that Pelosi and Schumer and others, uh, 35 other uh, or 35 Democrats are telling Biden to step down publicly, she's doing it in the background. Do you think this is a good idea even though voters voted him in, in the primaries. So let me answer your question directly. And I never thought I'd be saying this about somebody who I love and adore like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, both. I have a great deal of respect for them. I think Nancy Pelosi will go down as the greatest speaker in the history of American politics. Um, but they're committing political malpractice at, at best. Um, and what at worst it is, is petty politics, local petty politics from California, et cetera, throwing itself onto uh, the national stage. Um, look, I, I believe that, that Chuck Schumer and, and Nancy Pelosi probably know, not probably, they do know uh, this American political system better than I. They know Joe better than I. Um, but they also know that Joe Biden is not going to bow to public pressure at all. This man said he's in the race. And at the end of the day, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and others who, instead of rallying to the aid of Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg and, and Joe Biden, are running to their local newspapers to write op, op ed pieces, have done more damage to the president of the United States than he did to himself on June 27th. We'll write the ship. We'll, we'll, we'll get on board. Because at the end of the day, you only have three choices. I've said this for the past six months, and I think people are finally starting to pay attention to it. Heard my brother Charlemagne talking about it the other day, but you only got three choices in this race. You got Joe Biden, Donald Trump, and the couch. Make a choice. That's pretty stark. Natasha, so far in all this reporting, um, Nancy hasn't explicitly actually called for the president to drop out, but she has said, you can't win, uh, which the message is clear. What do you make of all of this talk and what it is doing um, to Joe Biden's candidacy um, and for the public, which if you look at the polling, the public isn't so sure that he should go forward looking just directly at the polling when asked if he's capable of, of doing another four more years. Well, Sarah, I think that the voters I talk to feel that their, their voices are being drowned out. Uh, they feel that there are people who are somehow sort of being uh, puppet masters above them and not really being practical about this moment. I did a piece about Black voters in particular who are very sober-minded. We're a very uh, practical voting bloc. And it feels as though there are a select group of people who are trying to force this story. Uh, there were a lot of people who, believe it or not, they thought the debate performance was disastrous, but they didn't think that that was the end of the campaign. They were still uh, willing to vote for President Biden, concerned, disappointed, yes, but willing to vote for him, who listened to the substance of what he said. And I think it is so tragic that for the past few weeks, we've been talking about this without even thinking about some of the actual answers that Joe Biden gave, even if his voice was shaky, even if he was coughing, we never actually engaged in the policy. And so it's disappointing. I think it's it's done a lot of damage to the campaign. I agree with Bakari on that. And I think that time is running out. So as much as it makes for an interesting conversation, the practicality of this, um, it, it really undermines uh, the argument that people are making about let's make a switch in in the, the ninth hour. Bakari, you know, in the battleground states, when you look at the numbers, um, you know, right after the RNC or during the, the RNC, Joe Biden lost some ground, according to the polls there. I mean, are Democrats the ones that are coming out like this just simply scared? Yeah, I mean, I think you actually have a, a large amount of, of, of silent Democrats or silent voters. Usually it's the flip side. I, I remember in 2016, people were ashamed to tell pollsters that they were voting for Donald Trump. I think you have a lot of that today. But we have to, we have to if we're going to be sober and honest about this, acknowledge that there has been some slippage with the president for, since 2020. But let me also explain to people why Joe Biden, because this, this doesn't get enough play. Let me explain to people why Joe Biden is actually the best person to run for president of the United States if you're a Democrat. Joe Biden has performed better with white voters, white women, white suburbs, white college educated voters, 70 percent of the electorate. He's performed better than anybody since LBJ. Right. 
And that's 70 percent of the electorate. And he's winning more than half of them. Barack Obama in 2012 won about 38 percent of those same voters, which means that in order for someone to win with that number of 38 percent, you have to have a turnout of black voters and black women and Hispanic voters and young voters that is just astronomical. And that's a heavy burden to bear. Joe Biden puts you in the best position. We just have to kind of, I mean, get in line. I mean, Republicans fall in love. I mean, Republicans fall in line. Democrats like to fall in love. I'm just trying to beat Donald Trump. Natasha, I just quickly have to ask you to get your sort of quick, what, what do you think explains though that the, the peeling off of some particularly younger black men to Donald Trump mm -hmm. um, from Biden's side? And to be fair, since we are in the panel that we are in and you can look at the color of our skin, um, there is always an impetus um, where black voters are talked about a lot as if they are the deciders. And as Bakari has rightly pointed out, uh, white voters are the majority uh, at this point in this country. Yeah, look, I need everyone to pick up a book called Steadfast Democrats and to understand that this conversation is actually not new. We often debate, we often hear the debate as a community about, well, why do we so frequently vote for the Democratic Party? What's behind that? You know, there's strategy, there's a reason behind that. There were legislative wins for the uh, black community that came with this realignment with the Democratic Party. And so uh, there's a legitimate history there that I think that people should know. Uh, but when you look at the two parties, it's a clear choice. Just like Bakari said, the, the voting for Trump, voting for, for Biden or the couch, a vote for the couch is a vote for Donald Trump. And, and one is going to you know, give uh, the black community, there's at least a conversation you can have about what the agenda is. The other, it, it's not gonna give you what you think it is. And so I think that this is a moment of education uh, despite the real frustration that people have, we have to engage people and let them know what the truth is. Those are the two choices. Natasha Alford, Bakari Sellers, thank you so much for that open and honest conversation on this Saturday. Appreciate it.